Twas dusk as the second Rackinal sun set slowly in the south, bringing upon Domloba's inhabitants one more long, muggy, equatorial night. Our hero finds himself in a room, quite an ordinary room, if you don't count the overpowering stench of beer and the odd view from the window, and the green alien, who hunkered down in his easy chair watching TV, looks very dissatisfied, if I may say so. The rifle is not highly sophisticated. At least is not as sophisticated as me. I could use a rifle like this on my interdimensional travels. For self-defense, of course. A busy boy's tape with the green and proud single. When I find a tape player, I'll listen to it. Our hero would feel most ridiculous trekking through the dimensions with a shelf in his hand. Our hero would feel most ridiculous trekking through the dimensions with a shelf in his hand. You wouldn't want to do that to yourself. You wouldn't want to do that to yourself. Just what I always wanted. Yep, it gets awful lonely at the top, but I'm not at the top yet, and I'm not that lonely. Talking to the television is not likely to be of any help. What a stingy green dude. With all this technology floating around, he could have at least bought himself a color TV. My sensors indicate that this is a typical inhabitant of Dumbluba. Yeah. No, thanks. Too sweaty for me. Every hour, 30 and a half hours a day, 11 days a week, the same old thing. One measly television station, one cruddy program. The family, that slobbering, sniveling soap. Boring, B-O-R-I-N-G, boring. What's the matter, sir? What happened? Who are you? How did you get in here? I've got this machine here. I wouldn't tell him about dimension traveling. He might not understand. The door was open. <sighs> Never mind. My main problem here is boredom. There's only one station on the tube on this dirty planet, and the one show it airs is a soap opera. <sighs> Friggin' soap. Yeah, well, sometimes even when you've got 40 channels, there's nothing to watch. Uh... Talking to the television is not likely to be of any help. What a stingy green dude. With all this technology floating around, you could have... I wouldn't want to bother an alien when he's glued to the tube. attempt to adjust your screen. This dimension is defined for black and white viewing only. Thank you. <sighs> oh, 
What a day. The boss was on my case all day, and I'm weary to the bone. What's for dinner? Oh, the usual. Stewed chicken and spinach. Uncle Marty is flying in from Africa today. Hi. Well, hello there. How are you? Fine and dandy, thank you. Oh, Marty, welcome back. It's so nice to see you. How was Africa? Africa was wonderful. But you know, there's nothing like coming home to my loving family. And we really love having you here, Marty. We sure do. Yes. Yes! yes. What a bore. The alien's right. We've got to do something. <laughs> Looks like your classical mother character, only here she's an alien. Looks like your typical TV land father figure, only here is an alien. This is the uncle that's just gotten back from Africa. I can if you want, but it just seems like a waste of time. This is the living room, where most of the scenes in this series take place. I can if you want, but it just seems like a waste of time. This is the living room, where most of the scenes in this series take place. Hey! Nice kitchen. Nice, gutty, 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 gutty. What's your name, Pooch? Huh? I have a dog at home, too. His name's Gandalf. He's a bit nicer looking than you. He's also a bit smarter, and now that I think of it, he's more everything than you are, you mangy mutt. How come the good stuff's never good for you, and the stuff that's good for you is never good, huh? How come the good stuff's never good for you? <laughs> Here, good, good. Here, good, 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 good. Grandma's food is so good that even a dog from another dimension can't resist it. There's a closet over here. There's a closet over here. You always find really useful things in kitchen closets. A length of rope. No explorer should leave home without one. Hmm, a shovel might help. It was a typical sultry August night as I sat in my office on Dadger Street. No Trump Tower, let me tell you. Across the hall, there's a dusty old storeroom. Hardly anyone ever comes by. I can see why. I'm a detective, a private detective. My mama wanted me to be a doctor. Well, it just wasn't in the cards. Yeah, it was your typical night, though the mosquitoes seemed bigger than well, than mosquitoes are supposed to be. And a kid, a strange kid, that came into my office. He told me that he came from another world and that he's looking for a piece of some ancient relic. I reminded myself that I'd sworn never to take on a client that had never done it at least once. But somehow this kid seemed serious. I'll take the case, kid. 
I knew that the best place to start looking for antiques was the City History Museum. There was an old girlfriend of mine there whom I hadn't seen in a long time. I thought it would be an excellent opportunity to drop in, to say hello, say hello. Charlotte, a lovely dame, left her husband and kid a couple of years ago. Couldn't take the wife and mother bit. So after an affair with a private eye, a pretty good looking private eye may I add, she became the curator of the City Museum of History and Myths. At least the exhibits don't talk back or demand their aids over easy. P.I. Say, Wisey, are you still playing cops and robbers with the kids on the block? I see you brought one of your little friends. Kids looking for a relic. Belong to a fellow named Merlin. Oh, sure. The relic you're looking for is called the Nocredon, and it looks like a rod twisted at the end. Does it belong to the museum? Can you show it to us? Yes, it belongs to the museum, but no, I can't show it to you. How come? It was stolen last night. Hmm. I wonder who could have stolen the Nocredon. And why didn't the thief touch anything else? You're the detective, darling. You tell me. I don't know yet, Charlotte, but I'll find out. Kids, see if there's any evidence around here that'll help us later on. Pack up whatever you need and let's get out of here. I suppose this is the crowbar the thief used to break the Nocredome's glass display case. It's not easy being a beautiful woman in a world full of ungrateful men. You naughty boy. You naughty boy. It's so hot in here. Don't you just hate it when it gets all hot and sticky and all you can think of is peeling off your clothes and jumping into a nice cold shower? She sure knows how to give a guy a hard time. It's not easy being a... Keep your hands to yourself. She used to be my woman, you know. The thief probably broke the glass and took the Nocredome. <laughs> what a keen observation. This is the City Museum of History and Myths. I've never been here before, at least not to view the exhibits. Yeah, I guess that's all there is here. Looks like the thief did a pretty good job of covering his tracks. Something about it smelled like the slop the pork diner calls breakfast. Maybe it was Charlotte's new perfume, or the museum which was just a little too ship-shaped right after the robbery. Who knows? What I did know was that every crooked thing in this town begins and ends in the same place. A hole in the wall called Glute Brutus's Resto Pub. Mr. Brutus? Detective? What do you know about the Nocredome and the museum robbery that took place two nights ago? Ah, yes, the museum. A half-time job for some two-bit burglar. And you're the one behind this whole whoop de doo right? So who was it, Gloop? I need names. Tell you what, I'll put a riddle to your little friend here. If he solves it, I might give you something. Here we have cards, four in a row. What card comes next is what I want to know. 
What card will complete the series for me? What color, what suit, what could the fifth be? I'm confused. What card would complete the series? What do you say, kid? Try to find it in the pack of cards on the table. I've got to admit, you've done it. You're the best I've ever seen. By the way, kid, are you looking for a job? The kid's with me, Gloop. And now, Gloop, I think you owe us something. Yes. About two weeks ago, a pretty dame came in here. She looked like she was a woman of means, but she sure didn't have a way with the cards. She lost all her money on the good old game of poker. She also gambled away the deed on her house. It was a sad, sad scene. But hey, that's the way I make a living. You're all heart, Mr. Brutus. Come on, kid. We're not going to get anything more out of him. Hey, kid, if you like riddles, take this. It's an old riddles book. I've already run through them all. Whoever owes Gloop Brutus money sooner or later winds up in the city cemetery. I made a mental note to pay it a visit. I have an old friend there from the war. Anyway, our next step was going to be the port. When you snitch a candy bar, you down it real fast so no one catches you with it. When you steal a rare and priceless work of art from the museum, you're definitely going to want to sell it and post haste overseas. will be out in droves tonight. What brings landlubbers like you to Pier 5 at this time of night? Has someone been down here lately trying to ship a large package, say in the past week or so? Well, I don't know. My memory's not what it used to be. Too much sea salt? <sighs> I remember the good old days. When a fish was a fish, and a reel was a reel. Pardon me, but how many fish would a fisherman fish if a fisherman could fish fish? Huh? Ah, never mind. Were you born here? No. Uh-huh. Uh, I remember. Do you mind if we take a peek inside this crate? No, those are my personal possessions. All right. That's not going to do you any good. Our hero tends to collect the most trivial things. He has carried this lizard's tail with him since the beginning of this journey.
This port is full of a whole lot of things you'll never need. I can't be bothered to fool around with that right now. Good thinking, kid. Would this perhaps refresh your memory? Ah, what a lovely fish hook. Made of real gold. Yes, now I remember. A few people have been down this way. A lot of folks ship parcels. One guy sent a crate off to Egypt to Cairo. I also saw a young lad sent a letter off in a bottle. And there was this little broad, but she didn't want to ship anything. All she wanted was to buy a crate. She was loaded, and she would have paid a fortune. Except I didn't have the kind of crate she wanted. How do you know she was rich? I could smell it. She was wearing this very pricey perfume. My wife once asked me to get her that perfume. I said, woman, are you nuts? We ain't exactly swimming in cash. You know, mister, to get by today, you gotta rob a bank or something. Hmm. Do you mind if we take a peek inside this crate? Go ahead. There's a jack and a pair of pliers in there. Take them and return for the gold fish hook you gave me. I haven't had any use for the jack since my car drowned. Did you know that cars can't float? Definitely too much salt. Who, may I ask, are you talking to? You know, you're a little weird, talking like that to inanimate objects. That old song stuck to me like a piece of... Our next stop was the regional cemetery, an especially crowded place. Like someone once said, if all the dead in this town were to rise up at once, we'd have a real overpopulation problem. Charlotte and I used to come here to play when we were kids. She swore over and over that she'd be mine forever. <laughs> the vows of a young girl. But some things never change. The caretaker of the cemetery always gave me the goosebumps, even on that very night. Has something unusual or different happened here this week? Yes. Something strange did happen. Many people came here to mourn their dead. <laughs> yes. To lay flowers on the grave and pull the weeds. I've got entire families buried here. It's a very popular cemetery, you know. <laughs> yes, popular cemetery. <laughs> Folks buy grave sites years before they eat. 
you were saying about that strange incident? Yes, you must excuse me. I do get carried away sometimes. <laughs> carried away. <laughs> you know, there aren't many people to talk to around here. Charlotte was here this week. Hmm. She came to visit her mother's grave. <laughs> grave. To lay flowers on the grave and tidy it up. And what's so odd about that? She came here at one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> Come on, kid. I think I've got everything I need. Back in the office, the kid and I took a look at a few pictures. Okay, kid. I think I know who stole the Nocrodome. What do you think? Yes, Charlotte was guilty beyond a shadow of a doubt. As guilty as a cat next to an empty bowl of milk. Once she'd lost all her worldly possessions at the Club Brutus Casino, she decided to stage a break-in to the museum and take the Nocrodome. Charlotte's disappeared, of course. She's probably trying her luck somewhere else. She left a note. My dearest detective, as you've probably guessed, it was I who stole the Nocrodome from, from the museum. museum. Things aren't the way they used to be. A woman's got to know how to get by. Remember when we were together? It was all so simple then. Darling, don't think badly of me. When I lost all my money in my home, I had to do something, something that would help me start over. You do understand, don't you, honey? Anyway, I've hidden the Nocrodom in a safe place. You and your friend will never find it. When the time's right, I'll come back for it. Yours always, Charlotte Blackthorn. Oh, we'll find it all right, Ms. Charlotte Blackthorn. We'll find it. So, kid, where did she hide the Nocrodome? This has got to work. I am pleased to announce that he has found the first piece of the staff. It was a typical stifling August night. Everything was back to normal. Even the mosquitoes were back on their beat. The Nocrodome, that piece of old Merlin's staff, was safe in its showcase in the museum. Another case closed, I said to myself. Hello? What? Stolen again? 
That kid, I knew I shouldn't have given him that set of lockpicks and taught him how to use it. Well, break a leg, kid. What is this place? Sorry, my mistake. We are located on the highway between Grotalia and Bethavina in dimension F45-32GR. Can you please get us out of here? Yes, sir.